What's your memory of the impetus for Continuous Delivery Book? What led you to wanting to write it? So the way it started off, I think, is um, I was working on one of those projects you talked about earlier uh, with Dan North and Chris yeah. Rees and Dante Brionis and uh, Ben Wyeth and uh, probably a, a, a few other, well, definitely a lot of other people. Sam Neiman was on that project as well, although I wasn't yeah. in, in his team. Um, and uh, that was a real pressure cooker. I mean, partly because we were in a tiny little room trying to make this software work on a, that had been written on Windows laptops and was going to be deployed to a Solaris cluster. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a, always a good nightmare. start. Always good. Yeah. I mean, Java's, <laughs> Java's platform independent. What could go wrong? Right. Um, and uh, off the back of that, we write a paper that we took to the Agile conference. Uh, it must've been like 2000 and five or something like that i guess or 2006 yeah. maybe um and we presented that paper that was me and chris reed and dan north um yeah. chris reed was on that project as well and uh sometime afterwards i think martin fowler was there and he introduced me to his publisher and said i think you should give these guys a book contract um <laughs> which was pretty uh, you know for me at the time i was like that's amazing um yeah. and so i just started writing it and i think really what what drove me and what's driven me ever since is being really annoyed um, that people are doing things wrong. Um, not not other people. <laughs> not, not that you're opinionated or anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I like a little rant. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, for, for example, um, having to, I'm basically, I'm fundamentally quite a lazy person in, in many ways. So the fact that I had to go in over the weekend to do the first release on that project, yeah. that really pissed me off. And yeah. I think, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. So uh, uh, what annoys me is, is waste and people's time being wasted and people having a bad time. Um, you know, all these things which impact quality of life fundamentally. Yeah. I think, you know, there, there's so much waste and stupidity in this industry and that's what annoys me. And I, yeah. I, I want to get rid of that. And I, I say this when I give a talk, you know, I ask people to put up their hands if they're still doing releases in evenings or weekends. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, well, that means, you know, we failed writing the continuous delivery yeah. book. That was my goal. My goal was that yeah. no one should have to do releases at evenings and weekends. That should that should go away. And all the stress and 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 kind of unnecessary stress and um and pain of, of, of the software delivery process should should go away that that really was what drove me and still drives me yeah 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 ab absolutely i i i remember it was before i met you before i worked at thoughtworks but, but working on a project and spend standing up for most of a weekend in a um a data room in in a in a bank deploying software because we weren't allowed to to have access to the to the to the servers in the data room, and we weren't allowed to automate the delivery or anything. And I and I was thinking, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just crazy. And 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 still, it, uh, you're 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 right. I, I mean, I, I I think I think that the continuous deliveries and ideas kind of been important to to both of our careers since. But 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 it's deeply important, and and, and it's still not widely practiced it's still uh, it's still it's still a revelation to lots of people when they see it and, and i i certainly think that one of the problems of our industry is that there's a large portion of people that work in it that haven't really seen what good looks like and that's a scary idea i think yeah i think that's absolutely right and it's, it's funny the extent to which the industry is so siloed and yeah. people can work and have a whole career of working in a particular way and not even realize that there's a different way of working that's possible. And I think, you know, probably the hot button issue for me is still, after all these years, continuous integration, where yes. people honestly think that, you know, it's better to work off in a branch, in a long-lived yes. branch, and then integrate that after they're done on their branch. And yes. people will people get really, like, personally attacked if you yes. suggest that that's not the best way to, to work. And actually integrating into a shared trunk or mainline multiple times a day, even on big teams, not only does it work, it's better. Like people yes. feel personally attacked by this and, and get really freaked out. And in general, whenever I present this idea, and I'm sure it must be the same for you, you can basically divide the audience into two halves. There's one half of people who think that it's 
impossible and, and, and can't, you know, we can't be serious. And then the other yeah. half of the audience is like, well, obviously, why wouldn't you do that? And it yeah. is today a hot button issue, which is extraordinary. Yeah, I, uh, exactly. And and I, I, you know, I'm, one of the things that I'm interested in and, and interested in talking about with you today is, you know, the the, the kind of inter- engineering principles that allow, you know, they kind of guarantee that we'll end up doing a better job. If we follow these principles, we will get a better result. It might not succeed, whatever it is that we're trying to do. We, we, we may still fail because it's engineering, not magic. But we're going to have, we're going to improve, we are, what, whatever it is that we're trying to do, we have a better chance of success if we do those things. Continuous integration, I don't understand how anybody can argue against it really, because it's the only way in which we can actually evaluate the truth of our system, by bringing it together and saying that's the truth of our system, let's test that out. And I I I I I agree with you entirely. I have the same experience, and not and, and I'm I am arguing with people uh, on social media quite a lot these days, but but also occasionally in person um, about on that topic all of the time. And as you say, I think it's it's probably the most emotive topic, which which is surprising because it seems I don't quite understand why people are quite so wedded to it. I have a theory about this. And my theory is that it's actually very much tied to the identity of what it means to be a software developer. And yeah. this idea that, um, you know, what a software developer, if, if you could do whatever you wanted as a software developer, what that would be would to be to sit in your room with your headphones on yeah. for days and days, just hacking away without, you know, yeah. talking to anyone, without eating properly, without getting any fresh air or anything like that. And that that is, you know, the the acme of what it means to to really be a software developer. And, yeah. and any extent to which you're working on a team or working with other people or having to talk to people somehow detracts from that pure essence of what it is to be a software developer. Yeah. And I think, you know, that, you know, my, the other thing that, you know, as you know, if you, as you know me, and, and I, I've talked about this a lot, like that's very much tied to like a lot of things that I also care about in the industry, like the gender imbalance and the yeah. imbalance in along race lines and other things. Um, that that identity is, you know, very much a kind of a duty thing to to have as an idea of, of what yeah. it means. Um, and so that's why I think it's kind of an identity thing for people. And I think you know something someone said on Twitter ages ago that really struck me was that a lot of the XP principles we're basically fighting against that kind of identity and saying, well, actually, yes. the best way to develop software is to work as a team and talk to each other a lot more. Yes. And software version control is fundamentally a communication tool. It's how you tell other people what you're doing. Yes. And so what you're doing with continuous integration is like communicating a lot more with other people and talking to them. And this idea that, you know, I'm not done. I'm not even, I can't even evaluate the extent to which I'm done until I'm integrated. And to yeah. do that, I need to know what other people are doing and that what I'm doing works with other people. And to do that a lot more often, like a lot of these XP principles are actually about building teams that are not based on that idea that you're just, that, that software development is primarily about sitting with your headphones on, knocking out code. <laughs>